I created this channel for growth, to be better. Every time I do a video, I want it to get better. I want my lighting to get better. I want my audio to get better. I want my background to get better. And how do I get better? By buying new stuff and comparing new stuff to the old stuff to see which is better. Did I make the right move or should I stick with what I already had? Let's go inside and find out. What's up everybody? This is Ahmed and Penny's back there relaxing. She's got a little bit of a tummy ache, but she'll be all right. But this is Ahmed and Penny with A. Roberson Photo, A. Roberson Media. And today I am here for a quick comparison between my old newer, oh, my old newer softbox, the square 16.25 by 16.25 to this, bam, bam. Bam, the diffuse collapsible, what do they call it, trapezoid. I thought it was an octagon, but it's not an octagon or a hexagon or anything like that. They call it trapezoid softbox, 23 inches in diameter. Now, rule of thumb, the bigger the light source, the closer the light source to the subject being lit, this mug right here, the softer the light, the softer the fall off is going to be. So you would think, as simple as that is, a 23 inch circular softbox may be roughly uh, about an arm's length away, give or take. My hand was folded a little bit to actually touch it. So almost a full arm and extended hand length away, but it is 23 inches in diameter. So is it gonna light me much softer and smoother than Old Faithful right here? I don't know, but we're gonna do a side-by-side -side direct comparison. I've seen on Amazon the Diffuse Trapezoid Softbox, and Neewer makes a softbox that is similar. Honestly, I think they're all the same company. I think most of us agree that they're all the same company, and they pretty much share manufacturers, just put their little twist on it and make it how they want it to fit their particular brand, but for the most part, I mean, what a couple of variances here and there, a couple of variations here and there. A soft box is a soft box. Uh, a trapezoid or hexagon or circular soft box is gonna be a circular soft box. Couple of minor differences, uh, catch lights. You know, with a circular soft box, you're gonna get circular catch lights. What are those? The lights that shine in my iris, right? I think that's the iris, not the retina, right? My eye. <laughs> <laughs> my eye if you look closely hopefully you can see that you can see a circular uh, catch light because of the circular softbox that I'm using the diffuse softbox but if I was to use this guy BAM which I'm gonna use again later in this video you should most likely see some type of square or rectangular type of softbox in my eyes right it only makes sense sorry about that uh, I heard some my phone is chiming I forgot to put it on mute you know how I do, always forgetting something. But anyway, when I start to use the uh, newer soft boxes, the square soft box, you should see some square catch lights in my eyes. Does that make a significant difference? Not necessarily true, but it depends on the look that you're going for. But otherwise, uh, they both have reflective material on the inside. I don't know if you can see that the way I'm trying to light it. I'm trying to get it to where you can see it's like reflective material on the inside there. There we go. And of course the diffuse circular soft box has the same reflective material. But one key difference that I did notice is the white translucent uh, diffusion panel material on the newer square is a little bit thicker than that of the um, diffuse soft box. And I'll show you uh, side by side footage of that or comparison footage of that so you can see that as well. But after looking at the videos, um, in post because I actually had to reshoot this video because my microphone was acting up. I dropped it. There was some static. What a mess. <laughs> but anyway, it gave me a chance to look at the footage. And even though the translucent uh, diffusion material on the diffu uh, diffuse 
softbox, circular softbox is thinner than that of the newer, it doesn't make greater hot spots. Uh, I think it's thinner to allow more light to come through because overall, the newer light panel, the NL660, I think the light panel itself is like nine inches by seven or something like that. But either way, it's that much smaller than the big circular um, footprint of the softbox. Whereas if it was in the smaller square softbox, the smaller LED panel with the smaller square softbox, it feels a lot more light in there. But I mean, with the softer panel, I'm gonna assume naturally that it's gonna let more soft light come through. Normally, when I do my videos here, I have a NL660 here and an NL660 right here lighting me in like a clamshell type of effect. But with this uh, larger light source, I'm thinking I can get away with one light. Yeah, it's gonna be some shadow uh, roll off, you know, uh, fall off rather because of my beard covering up the light that's hitting, hitting my chin. And I don't necessarily like that. That's why I like to use two lights to keep it evenly lit. But being that this is such a greater size light source, I'm thinking in post-production, I could lift the shadows a little bit and still get a good even light across this handsome mug right here. But I also thought because I like to use two uh, square soft boxes normally when I'm lighting my videos, I'm thinking I might just go ahead and get a second circular soft box. That way it'll give me that much more softer overall light coverage. You know, some people like to light their videos with a strong key light and a softer feel light to give a little bit of shadows like the Rembrandt type lighting. I've never been a fan of that. Even in my photography, you look at some pictures that I take, I always like to light my subjects evenly, not necessarily head on because it makes your image look a little flat, but I like my lighting evenly coming from both sides. So now that I'm getting more comfortable lighting my videos, I'm starting to like my videos being lit evenly from both sides too. So instead of doing a circular softbox on this side and a square softbox on this side, making two different types of catch lights, I'm thinking I'm gonna invest in a second circular softbox to have them both clamshell like this, and <laughs> like this mug, nice and even uh, across the board. So that might be my plan, but we're gonna know more after I switch out this circular softbox and put the square softbox right in its place, right here where it sits, not moving anything so we can do a direct comparison. But before I get my butt up and move to make this direct comparison, I'm gonna sit still right here, wipe, wipe this shine off a little bit. I'm gonna sit still right here so I can do a side by side, put the video up side by side, so you can make a determination on what you like best. I'm thinking I'm gonna like the larger softbox better. I mean, common knowledge says so, at least common photography and video lighting knowledge says so. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. So I'm gonna sit still for a couple of seconds just so you can stare at this mug. Then I'm gonna switch to the square softbox and then sit still again so I can do a side by side and then we can determine which we like best. And I'm back again. So, what do you think? Uh, let me wipe down some of this shine. Now, I'm doing the video, the rest of this video right here with the, uh, well, at least this portion of the video with the NL660 square softbox. And <clears throat> what I did want to talk about is uh, construction. I was talking about how the uh, both soft boxes have the soft or silver reflective material. Um, the newer softbox has a thicker white diffusion panel on there versus the diffuse uh, circular softbox. But also, they both collapse and expand the same way. They pretty much collapse within themselves and expand. And they both use magnetic arms to lock uh, the softboxes in their uh, fully extended positions. But the only difference is with that, the diffuse softbox actually uses a lock. The uh, arms are magnetic, but it has a locking sleeve that goes over the magnetic arms to keep it in position. Whereas if you look at the newer, if you barely touch it, it, it will just fall out of position. Not saying that, I mean, well, they're not gonna collapse on their own, but what if you're in a scene and somebody bumps your, um, your light source and the softbox collapses a little bit 
that could change the direction of your lighting. It can, it can change how the soft box uh, diffuses the lighting because the arm is out of position. With the diffuse soft box, you don't have to worry about that because it's locked into position. And that's even better for me because um, some of you may have heard in my other videos, I don't like to break my stuff down, especially with the soft boxes having such a small footprint. There is no need for me to collapse them, break them all the way down, put them back in their bags where you twist them and lock them into position and then put them back over and over and over again. I'm not going to do that. And it might be a bad idea to do that anyway, especially with the diffuse soft box where you have to twist it and break it back down to fit back into its original carrying bag because what you're twisting are the metal arms that actually give it its circular shape. Well, if you constantly twist it, open it, twist it open, twist it open, over time it's gonna wear those that magnetic rod out, I mean not magnetic, that metallic rod out uh, that much sooner as opposed to me just leaving it fully expanded, fully opened at all times. I mean, the circumference is 23 inches, but the depth, I'm looking at it back there, the, the, the actual depth of the soft box without looking at uh, Amazon, I'll confirm this later, but the depth of the soft, bo soft box can't be no more than maybe six inches, maybe seven inches of depth. So that's not gonna take up a lot of space anyway. So there's no need for me to collapse them. One thing about the diffuse soft box that I kind of don't like is that even though it's a universal soft box and it's made for multiple lights in different sizes, it is somewhat advertised for square LED uh, light panels similar to the newer uh, NL660. But the newer NL660, um, I believe the face of it is like 9.5 inches wide by maybe eight inches or nine inches tall. I think it's a square nine by five by nine by five. Whereas the opening for the back of the diffuse um, soft box is 11 and a half by 11 and a half. So you're losing or you're leaving at least two inches of space where the light can actually bounce and come out of the back end. Similar to using umbrellas when you're doing photography, you're losing a lot of light coming off the back end as opposed to all the light going forward with the newer soft boxes where the square is much smaller and it pretty much sits on the face of the uh, NL660 light panel. With the square soft box, I don't have to use the barn doors that came with the NL660, but as you see me putting it together with the diffuse soft box, because the opening is so big, I think it's 11 by five by 11 by five, I said, because the opening is so big, you have to use the barn, the barn doors, open them wide up, and then use the supplied Velcro straps to lock it down and hold it into position. I think I was able to put it together in a good enough position to where a lot of light is not being lost. So I'm okay with that. But I mean, I guess that's not necessarily a defect considering that they advertise this soft box to be universal for multiple, universal for multiple different size light sources. So I guess it's not a thing, you know? I mean, if you don't want to lose any light falling off through the back, you just have to upgrade your lights and get a bigger light panel, I guess right get an 11 by 11 light panel versus a 9 by 5, a 9 by 9 light panel problem solved right <laughs> i guess so but other than that like i said in the beginning um using a bigger soft box which your light source is going to give a bigger softer light fall off and that's what you want you don't want your light really harsh being all hard on you um where every time I smile, you see my cheeks, they shine. My chrome dome reflects light like nobody's business. So if I'm to use the newer soft boxes, I'm always trying to reposition and get my lighting better growth, you know, trying to make sure my audio is good, make sure my lighting is good, make sure my position is good, make sure my background is good. All that stuff matters. So if I upgrade to the diffuse soft boxes on both sides, my lighting is gonna be that much sweeter. And that's the ultimate goal growth to get everything better to have your videos better to attract more attention get more followers more viewers and keep people interested as opposed to having flat harsh lighting bad audio you know stuff like that so uh as of right now that's a, i'm giving thumbs up to the uh, diffuse soft box i can't be mad that it has a bigger opening because my light panels are smaller i just should buy bigger light panels right maybe or maybe not the way i have it strapped in there pretty good i'm not losing any light off the back so i think i'm going to be pretty great i think i'm going to be pretty good going forward and right here as we speak i'm going to make a decision to go ahead and buy another uh diffuse soft box circular soft box and sell my newer square soft boxes i'm not going to have a need for them anymore because i want the bigger light source to light me 
that much more evenly. And with a bigger light source, I get to turn the power and intensity down on my newer uh, NL660s, which keeps the light that much softer and flattering as well. So just, just like that, unboxing, review, and conclusion, decision to upgrade and get, my, get myself a second diffused softbox uh, to light my mug and to light my scenes whenever I get to the point where I start filming my little short videos and whatnot, right? That's a win for the diffuse, uh, that's a win for the diffuse softbox. So if you like this quick comparison and I didn't talk too fast or talk your ear off or anything like that, please consider giving your boy a thumbs up. It always makes me smile. And please leave a comment. Just like I said, I always do my best to uh, reply back. Uh, a couple of comments I got, it, it took me a while to get back to because I wasn't getting notifications on my phone, but I did get to you guys and uh, it was nice chatting with you and I hope to chat with you again. And as always, if you like what I'm doing here, you're back, so that must mean you did like something, please consider subscribing. It makes me feel good when I see my numbers go up and get to see some familiar names and uh, have the same, uh, better conversations as we go. That's what I'm here for, right? To grow myself, to help you guys grow, to grow together. So anyway, this is Ahmed and Penny back there laying down, relaxing while I'm out here talking your guys' ear off. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.